There's a new structure that you can build called the Witch's Cauldron. Or just Cauldron, I don't remember. Anyway, not important. Um, so yeah, in this video, I'll be making it. So yeah, I'm doing this again. Also, if you enjoyed the video, then please consider subscribing since it helps me a lot and I make content like this all the time. But anyways, let's continue with the video. So now I've got this command block right here, which pretty much just first detects uh, at an armor stand and then positioned uh, one block below it on both the X and Z axis. And then if there isn't a cauldron nearby, then just summon in the cauldron. So now if I just place on this armor stand, then the cauldron comes with it. Uh, and yes, yeah, also always going to be perfectly centered as well. Uh, now, of course, this isn't going to be how you're going to spawn in the cauldron when it's finished, but it's at least nice to one, just have an actual entity to spawn in and also so just a way to spawn in the cauldron that isn't the actual way, just for testing and stuff. So now I think it's time that I move on to actually making a proper way to summon in the cauldron. Uh, now this is going to be a little bit uh, like different than how I would usually do it with every single one of my other bosses. Because like I just wanted to naturally spawn in, which is something I've never done before. Now the way that I'm hopefully going to be able to do that is that I'm going to just first summon in the armor stand at the player's location just at the beginning of the world or whenever you activate the creation. Uh, and then it's going to be teleported around using a spread player. Boring, shut up, nerd! Okay, so now I've got the spread players command to be working. So now, as you can see, like this armor stand is teleporting all over the place. So now I've just done a fill biome command right here. And then, as you can see, uh, it's settled down right there. So now, if I just summon in a new one, then. As you can see here, yeah, it's teleporting around all around me in a 5 to 10 block radius. And if I come close here, then it sums it in. So then I think the next thing that I want to do is to just make all of the different particles and stuff. Because <laughs> trust me, there's going to be a lot of particles. Oh boy. <laughs> Alright, so now all of the particles are in, and I added in quite a lot of particles, like, I'm not sure if I like it, um, because there's just so many particles, like, from a distance, it just looks like a mess, honestly, but I tried to fix it a little bit uh, with making these flames a little bit less, and, yeah, like, I, I feel like it looks good enough now, uh, so, yeah, then here's the face, and I, I, I tried, okay, I, I really tried, but... <laughs> Just two dots. <laughs> like, I, I just feel like there wouldn't be enough space for the mouth, and I just feel like it would look so weird. I also added in uh, these campfires down here at the bottom, uh, which right now it's a fill command, but I'm going to make that be in a clone command, which I will come to next. Alright, so now I've just built this little area uh, where the boss is going to be, and also my Santa is gone, which is sad, but it's next day in real life, so <laughs> that, yeah. Uh, but then, uh, yeah, so in this little area, uh, I'm going to spawn in the boss right here, and I'm I'm going to spawn it in with a clone command so i'm pretty much just going to be changing this command which first just would place in all of the campfires and instead just change that to the clone command so now i've just tried to uh, test it out and then as you can see here it works perfectly well so yeah I, I think that's then going to be everything for the spawning so then i can finally get onto literally everything else on to another part which is its health because right now this consists of two entities which is the block display entity and the armor stand but none of those entities can actually take damage so the block display entity is just straight up invulnerable and the armor stand although it can be killed it's always in three hits you can't make it take more or less than only three hits which isn't really that good. Um, so then I think what I'm going to do is that I'm going to summon in uh, an interaction entity, basically just around the entire cauldron, and then detect if that interaction entity has been hit, then pretty much just like make another entity, I think, have less health, and then make a boss bar for that entity that displays its health and then when that entity dies, then kill all of the cauldron entities. Alright, so now I've just put in this command block, which summons in the interaction entity right there. 
Uh, and then now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to copy one of the command blocks from my nature run creation uh, to basically just detect uh, if that interaction entity has been hit with a left click. Now if this reaches zero, I don't really know what will happen. Uh, everything just disappears and I get some experience, okay. That actually really worked <laughs> um okay i i did not think that would work this well so that's then pretty much all of the damage uh like all of the damage stuff in so next it's either doing some of the attacks or doing its drops and right now I'm more leaning towards the drops because i really don't want to do the attacks there's so much that i gotta make now in minecraft dungeons the corrupted cauldron drops pretty much any item that you can get in the soggy swamp although it's usually some of the rarer items now i'm not going to make every single weapon for minecraft dungeons that's for another video uh but like i think for now i'm just going to make it and drop some experience or something because it already dropped some and i don't know if i can tweak how much experience a mob drops although I know, I feel like I can, <laughs> like, you can already tweak their loot table. So, yeah, I'm gonna mess around with that a little bit, and then hopefully I can make it to drop at least something. Now, when it gets to pretty much zero, then as you can see, it currently just says hi, but I can then, instead of it saying hi, uh, summon in a way, like, an experience orb that gives you way more experience than a normal one would, and then also just kill the arm, or, and then also just kill the cauldron. Alright, so now I've made it so that you actually get the experience, uh, and this was actually a little bit more different than I was originally going to make it, uh, because originally I was just gonna make so that you just get a button of experience. But then, whilst making the command block, uh, I noticed that here I could set the age of the experience. Um, so this is pretty much just how long it takes for it to despawn. This will pretty much just be an infinite XP farm that gives you very little XP. So if I now just turn this on, then the Corrupted Cauldron is dead, so it will die and then the experience should drop. So now it's gone, but then is there an experience orb somewhere? Yes! There's a few, actually. Okay, uh, if I just kill them. What? Why is that just one? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that wasn't just one experience orb. Okay, you know what? I think I'm just gonna leave the experience orb drop alone. One, because I'm deathly afraid of it and its capabilities. But also just because, like, I, I got, like, <laughs> I've gotten either the time, patience, or energy to try and fix it. And, like, I don't even know how I would begin to fix it. So, yeah, I'm just gonna move on to the attacks. Starting with the, pi uh, with the pink slime spawn ability. And then now I've just put in these three command blocks. So, this one makes it so that um, when the cauldron slime uh, spawn scoreboard is one or below, then it gets set to 200. This one makes it so that when it gets reset, then uh, it just summons in the slime. And then this one makes that it constantly goes down by one every single tick. So then since that 200, then it's going to reset every 10 seconds. So now, as you can see, it just spawned in one slime. But then now it should spawn in one there. So yeah, right now... It at least summons in the slime every single, uh, like, every 10 seconds. So now, the next thing that I'm gonna do is to just try and make this look a little bit more good. <laughs> Alright, so now about two and a half hours later, then the slimes are finally finished, and like, this was so complicated, like, it was pretty much its own command block video in itself, um, and yeah, like, I went through quite a lot of different variations of it, one was like with a llama, I tried to make the skeleton work, but what I ended up doing was actually using a guardian. Now, it doesn't actually shoot a projectile, it only shoots the beam, which doesn't really look the same, it doesn't really function the same, the AI isn't perfect, but like, it, it's it's at least something, okay? So, right now it summons it in, uh, like, on the cauldron, and then, like, I did consider putting in a spread player's command so that the slimes won't just spawn in the cauldron, because sometimes they won't jump out of it again. Um, but 
like I just decided to do it like this because most of, most of the time then it works. Now the way that I made the pink slimes actually pink uh, was just that I, uh, instead of making my own texture pack, I just went to vanillatweaks.net, which I will leave a link to down in the description, uh, and then just selected the pink slimes texture pack there. So now with that finally done, then I want to move on to the next attack which is going to be the fire ring around it. So the way that it works in Minecraft Dungeons is that the fire comes on these mossy cobblestone blocks. Uh, so I don't know exactly how I'm going to do that, but I think a good way to start off is by changing all of these uh, command or changing all of these mossy cobblestone blocks to be command blocks that summon in armor stands and then uh, that I will then put in a fill command on all armor stands with a certain tag, which all of these armor stands will have, that will make the block that it's at be a uh, mossy cobblestone. So now if I try, then it should be, yeah, okay, right there. So this is pretty good, um, and yeah, I'm probably gonna tweak the particles quite a lot, uh, and also just make them look more, like, united, I guess, uh, since they look like just one flame in Minecraft Dungeons, uh, but right here you can pretty easily see that they're just columns of the witch particle. Um, but yeah, so now, first I'm just gonna tweak the particles so that they look good, and also maybe tweak the distance a little bit more, uh, and then I can move on to the damage. Actually, first, I've just now added in this cooldown, so uh, I've added in the Cauldron Fire cooldown scoreboard, which is a, just a dummy, and then also these command blocks, so that now if I get close to it, then of course it activates, but then that becomes 250, and then when it reaches 150, then the particles go away, and the armor stands stop having like a special tag, and then if I now get close, I can get as close as I want, and then now that it's reached zero, then the cooldown is off, so then I can trigger it again. Alright, so now the particles are in, so now I feel like this looks pretty good, like, it has the close enough effect that I'm kind of hoping for here. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty much just using a dust particle, and of course also the witch particle, and yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. So now onto the damage, which, like, I don't think will be that difficult, um, so... All I'll pretty much have to do is just execute at and then uh, pretty much all of the fire armor stands and then just run uh, damage and then at P in like a distance of, I don't know, two block or one block, uh, let's do two blocks um, and then, I don't know, maybe just one and then with, for example, I don't know, like explosion or something or actually I should probably, <laughs> should probably take in fire now that, you know, I can do that. So this is quite a lot of damage without netherite armor but with unenchanted netherite armor, then it deal, uh, then it deals one heart to every single, uh, every single damage tick, and then yeah, uh, with or without, I mean, then the flames immediately disappear. Without netherite armor, then as you can see, the steals. <laughs> quite a lot of damage, which is what I want, since like in Minecraft Dungeons it deals an absurd amount of damage. So then onto the next attack, which is- whoa, whoa, whoa. L look at how long this video is already. Like, I'm not gonna have time to make another attack, okay? Like, <laughs> both in the video and in real life, because like I've got about two days to edit this video already, and <laughs> yeah, I, I need a lot of time. <laughs> um, so yeah, like, I think I'm just not going to make uh, the last attack, which would be then uh, the attack where like it summons in the mobs, and then uh, when those mobs die, then it actually also heals the cauldron, which I do think is a really cool game mechanic, it's just that like, yeah, as I said, I don't have time. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess I'm just gonna end the video here, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty happy with this cauldron, like, it's the first boss fight I've made with an actual boss bar, which I'm pretty happy with, and like, I don't know, I just feel like it looks really fun, like really funny as well. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this cauldron turned out. Uh, and yeah, if you're also, then make sure to leave a like on the video. But yeah, I guess this is going to be everything for this video, so bye!